Hey everybody, this is Indie Geek, and today I'm taking a look at The Last Tinker, City of Colors. This is a game that is coming out on M May 12th. Almost said March. Uh, March is quite a while ago. It's coming out on May 12th for $22. If you pre-order on Steam now, using the link in the description, you can get the game for a 10% discount, so about $20. Uh, it will be out for PC, Mac, and Linux and it is by me 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 productions so let me just go into play here uh, i've actually played for maybe close to two hours or so and i'm going to start uh... like an hour to an hour and a half in so you can see uh... even though i've, I've played through this you can go back and replay sections because you can see that there are collectibles to find um, but i'm going to jump into kind of the big kind of exposition point of the game. So this takes place after uh, the first night of the game and basically we have this oh no my current progress will be lost. Yeah sure I'll load anyways. That's okay. Um, basically we have this purple sprite come to us at night and oh I didn't realize I was gonna have to do the sneaking section that's okay this took a while but I think I can probably do it just fine now I was a little tough at first but that is a typical sneaking section for you so this is our purple sprite we are inside this tower that the purple sprite told us we needed to go to in order to get a special power so Sorry for kind of skipping the dialogue there, and I am going to turn some of the audio stuff down a little bit. Sorry. Uh, really great audio in the game, but I also want to make sure that you can hear my voice. So, that's our goal, obviously, that room. So, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Alright. So, uh, one of the things I'm going to kind of talk about a lot with this game is that it is kind of a throwback to a lot of like um, like PlayStation 2 era platformer games and it really does feel like that sort of game uh, you know something kind of like maybe a, a Sly Cooper or like a Ratchet and Clank and honestly like it it feels really really good it's got like a ton of production value I'll actually show getting a paintbrush here because that's kind of cool. They're basically like extra collectibles in the game. I don't know that they actually do anything, but they're kind of... Oh, never mind. I guess once you get it, you've got it for good, which is nice. So I don't actually have to re-get it even though I loaded. Um, so obviously you can go back and collect the paintbrushes that you missed, which is a nice feature to have because uh, they are hidden pretty well. But um, one interesting thing about this is, even though I said it was a platformer, uh, there is no dedicated jump button, so you can't actually just jump. Um, the way it works is almost in, like, kind of an Assassin's Creed style. So like this rope, I'm just going to run towards it and he'll auto-climb, and then you'll see me kind of jump across some beams here. Uh, and it's all just using running and holding a direction button. And I think it works really well because um, it kind of gets rid of a lot of the issues from that era of platformers where, like, it was really easy to miss jumps and, and then you lose progress. Uh, you don't really get that here because you can't really miss jumps. So, um, as kind of a backstory to the game, before the big split, there was... Um, so I'm just going to kind of explain this. Uh, before the big split, there was just one world of color. And the main inhabitants were... Uh, so basically we have to open this door in the right pattern. If we look over there, we see green, blue, red. So that's what we're going to do. Um, but basically, so there were green, blue, and red people. And eventually they... <coughs> excuse me. Eventually they started fighting. <clears throat> Excuse me, there we go. And uh, basically caused the land the land to be split into three sections. The green, the red, and the blue section. 
So, <clears throat> this purple spirit basically came to us at night telling us that it was going to help us get the power to reunite all of the um, sections of land, and has told us that we are a tinker, which basically means that we have the power to do that. So that's basically the, the backstory to the game. Um, and this is the section where the story really starts getting uh, kind of interesting. So, this is the painting of Color Town. It was the very first idea for a city of colors ever. It's connected to the very essence of this place. As you can see, my color isn't there. The sky above the city used to be purple, but I have been forgotten, and now the painting has been separated, just like the inhabitants of Color Town. Go ahead and touch the painting with my power. That way we can restore my color to the others and make this city whole again. All right, so we're going to do this. And things are not going to go quite the way that the purple spirit told us. Thank you, Koru. I can do the rest myself. I admit it wasn't fair using you like this. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Goodbye, Koru. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, um, the dialogue is kind of also kind of typical of that era of platformers. Um, it's got kind of an Animal Crossing style, uh, sort of made up language, kind of just making sounds, which I think works well. Um, obviously, you know, this is an indie production, so, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a cheaper way to get over the costs of, of voice acting, but have it still sound professional and sound good, so. Personally, I think uh, that that's a good decision if, you know, if that's the decision that has to be made. And then we get uh, this section. Uh, as far as performance of the game, because I noticed there's there's a little bit of like framiness right now, um, for the most part it's been really good, but there are these occasional moments of framiness going on where we kind of drop some frames, things like that. But never anything like too bad, I haven't had the game like actually slow down a ton or anything. And I do want to take this moment to just talk about how, like, really awesome the art is. Uh, it's got almost kind of like a, a Psychonauts kind of look to the art style. And I've just been, like, absolutely blown away by everything I've seen so far. Um, and every time I go to a new area, it's like a whole new interesting thing to see. And as you can see, we are losing some color. Uh, there is a combat system, which we'll see a little bit of here, even though I'm only just fighting boxes. Uh, it's basically like a, a five or six hit combo system. There isn't much past that, at least yet. I don't know if that uh, changes throughout the game. Like this section, oh, this is so cool. And then I love uh, seeing the colors kind of drain. As, uh, I, well, they start calling it the bleakness as the bleakness starts taking over. So now I've got the red spirit, and he thinks that um, we're the cause of this. So he's going to uh, help us out for now so that he can figure out if it's our fault or not. All right. So we're just going to kind of fight our way through these boxes. Uh, and there is some, some enemy combat as well. Um, and there's actually some of that earlier in the game as kind of a tutorial for the combat system. So, quick, bleakness is coming. Alright. So, yep, we need to sprint. Uh, full controller support, of course, if I did not mention. Uh, definitely works well. It plays great. Um, I mean, the only weird thing was that there wasn't a dedicated jump button that takes a few minutes to get used to, but it doesn't really like affect the gameplay that much. I never found myself not understanding what to do and wishing I had a jump button. Um, this is our friend here. Uh, him being sick was the reason that we agreed to help the purple spirit. And now you can see that color is draining. So uh, This is another cool sequence this will probably be the last thing that I show off. Um, and this is actually a good moment to kind of talk about the music as well. Uh, because the music all the way through is, is really, really good so far. I've, I've enjoyed listening to the music. 
and I've had a good time just listening to the soundtrack. Uh, you know, it, it adds a lot to the game. And I think that, in general, it's just a really, really good soundtrack. So, yep, he is very worried. Reasonably so. I would be very worried, too, if this was happening to me. So... Uh, these act as checkpoints, so that's what those are. Basically, we just have to make our way through here. Um, if I hadn't mentioned, the kind of idea behind the world is that it's all made of paper, cardboard, and, and glue. So, like, you can see the the speech bubble there is, is like a piece of cardboard. So it's almost got, like, um... Uh, like a tearaway vibe, the, the newest game from Media Molecule, in, in terms of how the world is built. And that's really cool, I, I think it gives a lot of charm to the world. And in general, that's true of everything, like all the characters have a lot of life to them, and like even side characters that you just meet, or even ones that are just like sitting there and, and don't talk to you. Uh, you know, every character's got a lot of life to them, and uh, you know, just just brings a lot of kind of, well, I guess, color, no pun intended, to the game. Oh no. That was not good. Uh, we can take some time here to punch some boxes and help save people. If you so choose. So. Yep, he just thanks us for helping him out. Um, we're collecting little gems, as you can see, those are to like buy things. Uh, at this point in the game, as, as far as I've gotten, I've only had to buy one thing. Um, I should mention I can't speak for the total length of the game because I have not finished the game. Um, but, like I said, it's taken me roughly two hours. Because uh, when I ended, I was like just past this part here. So, um, after this sequence was about when I had hit the two hour mark. So I would guess, um, you know, probably, I don't know, maybe even like 10 hours or so after for the full length game. But like I said, I can't totally speak to that. So, um, you know, as always, like, uh, if you're looking for that kind of thing, check out other reviews. You know, don't just take my word for it. Um, my guess is the pace the game has been going, I would expect maybe a 10 hour game. But... I also don't want to promise that because I can't. So, these are some of the little monsters. Um, as of right now, we can't hurt them, so we just have to kind of outrun them, which isn't very difficult. I don't know if we'll be able to hurt them later. I would imagine so. But, again. Oh, yep, so I died. Um, checkpoints are really, really good. I haven't like ever lost much progress from dying I feel like the checkpoints in general are very fair so um, also there's there's four difficulty levels I should mention uh, I'm, I'm playing on normal I typically like to do normal for videos like this um, let's see what were the other ones so there was hard there was instant death which I'm guessing just turns your life bar into a uh, a one-hit life bar. Uh, these are cool too. These kind of remind me of the the rail sections in Ratchet and Clank. And then there is kids difficulty, which I'm not totally sure um, what it changes, but I'm assuming it just makes it easier. Maybe gives you more life or makes enemies weaker. Things like that. All right, and then I uh, think we are just about to the stopping point I wanted to hit here, so I guess now would be a good time to kind of wrap up my thoughts. Um, I mean, if you you know if you couldn't tell throughout the video, I'm definitely uh, impressed with the game. I'm having a lot of fun. It feels like a really good kind of representation of that era of platformers that I was talking about, that era of kind of adventure games. Uh, you know, it feels a lot like that. 
it really in terms of everything, gameplay, music, art, it kind of brings all of that back. And I love that because that was, um, you know, that was when some of my favorite games of all time were made. I mean, I absolutely love Ratchet and Clank, big fan of Sly Cooper, things like that. And this brings back a lot of the feeling of those games. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a gameplay standpoint, everything's been really good so far. Um, I like the story a lot. I've been drawn into it. Uh, you know, it's not just your kind of everyday adventure story. You know, I like this whole idea of color town and, and people kind of getting upset about colors. What is down here? Hey, Mr. Fisherman. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, you know, I mean, as you can see, like, there's just so much life to the game in general, like, I mean, we've just got that fisherman there who's just kind of hanging out, and, uh, you know, we've got all this, like, extra scenery everywhere, stuff like that. It just looks alive, and I, you know, I really, really appreciate that. As far as, like, as far as I'm concerned, this game, like, seems like it has really, really big production values, and I appreciate that. Oh, here we go. This is one that I actually missed. So, that's how hidden the paintbrushes can be. But yeah, I mean, like, if you're into any of the games that I mentioned, if you are just a fan of, like, fun adventure games with, uh, with you know, kind of a, a nice little story to it, then I would highly recommend picking this up. Follow the link in the description, and uh, that will take you right to the Steam page where you can pre-order if you are watching this before the 12th, or if it is after the 12th, you can just buy and start playing right away. But that is where I'm going to wrap this up. So, as always, feel free to leave comments if there's anything you'd like to comment on. Subscribe to the channel to see more videos every single day. And if you liked my look at The Last Tinker, City of Colors, then please do consider clicking the like button because that helps me out a lot. I definitely appreciate everything you do to help. So, with all of that being said, I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.